Amen. Praise God. I pass it on to Colin. You can um, open up for questions. Amen. Thank you, Pastor. So for questions and answers, you can post in the chat. Uh, you can also unmute yourself to ask the question. So please uh, go ahead. Wow, I got a lot of wonder in that. Jalen, you must have been writing while I was finishing preaching. But it's a good question. I love your questions. It says, Pastor, uh, in Revelation 4, verse 5, there are seven lambs of which are the seven spirits of God. Yeah, these are the ones in, in the throne room. Placed between the four living creatures around the throne and the 24 elders. Is it telling the worship of the four living creatures and the governance of the 24 elders are all energized by the seven lambs of fire that is the seven spirits? The answer to this first question is yes. Because the seven spirits are actually part of the third person of the Godhead split seven ways. And they, the Godhead is of course greater than the 24 elders. Because 24 elders are created beings, even though they are very powerful. Same with the four living creatures, they are created beings. But the seven spirits are not created. They are the essence, the sevenfold essence of the Holy Spirit. And the answer to that question is yes. Second question, the merging of the four living creatures and 24 elders with the bride is for bringing fullness to the bride as well as bringing fullness to themselves. It is mutual. They can't be complete without us. We can't be complete without them. But once through the merging, the respective fullness is achieved for us and for them too, then will we be unmerged again separated again from each other to follow separate destinies we have? Question mark. Okay, it is true. The 24 elders and the following creatures will merge with us because we have to merge our authority to take the authority of the whole universe, every atom or molecule. And since the 24 elders are the foundations, we merge with them and they merge with us. And your question of whether there will be an unmerging uh, it is possible when God wants to create more things in the future, like another universe or another extension of this universe, then some unmerging might be done so that creation can come forth. So the answer to that question is yes. The merging must take place and yes, it is possible for some different alignments to take place for a new creation. Question number three, Revelations, oh, Revelations um, 2.14. He creates everything new. Where does that leave the old universe? Will it be created anew or washed with its blood and made to perfectly align with the new heaven and the new earth? Good question. Remember the third cube? And in the, the third cube is the Godhead cube. There's the Father. And uh, then there is a uh, uh, new heaven, new earth, and then there is the Holy Spirit panel and Christ panel, of which we are, we are joined with. There is a lower panel. That lower panel is what I call the old universe of whoever and whatever could not be renewed, still in that lowest panel. And, um, and only God knows uh, how long that part will be finally uh, completed in their own timeline, which is different from the timeline of New Heaven, New Earth. So uh, it's still there uh, for those that cannot progress into New Heaven, New Earth. Now, the people that live in that lowest panel in the Godhead do not know that the rest of the panels exist invisible to them. Just like for the end, the end on the earth crawling does not know that there's a planet called Mars, Venus, Jupiter, or that. It doesn't even know it exists. It doesn't even know the earth is round. It doesn't know that other different types of life form exist. But it's just there. And that is by the mercy of God. Because God has created all things and He does His best to redeem all.
Uh, let's see any other question here. Uh, okay. My father was healed of psoriasis when a scarf that pastor prayed over was uh, put over him. Amen. Yes, up to you. Thanks for sharing that. And the Lord's going to use uh, uh, your family, both you, you have a calling of God, and your husband to have a calling. The last time I met him in um, um, Abakalalang, I saw something in him that has awakened, come alive. So both of you are going to serve God in this uh, end time calling. And of course, your daughter uh, Zoe and, and, and all the others, uh, including uh, 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 the, the two others of family that we met in Bakalalang. There's something has imparted onto your life. You are blessed in that. God's going to do great mighty things. And thank you for sharing that uh, testimony. Uh, the cloth anointing is very powerful. Amen. Where one demon possessed case he also. So we had a similar experience when um, a handkerchief did drive a demon out of a person. Amen. Okay. Uh, in the ultimate finality, what a big word, is there any difference in the glory of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit? More oh, powerful question. And the powerful answer is no. Because of the merging quality that the Lamb of God brought to unite all things. So together, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Spirit, and us, the Bride, to most of creation will just look like one sun. They wouldn't know. When you look at the sun, you don't know that, that uh, uh, nuclear fusion is taking place. And the sun's burning is not a normal burning of fire. It's nuclear fusion, where atoms are merged into one. And the same way, the creation of the universe of New Heaven, New Earth, look at us in New Jerusalem, all they see is a brilliant sun and inside is us, inside is the Holy Spirit, inside is the Word and the Father. So the answer to that question is no more difference. Yep. Praise God and Colin, any additions that you want to add to? Yeah, thank you Pastor. So, um, I remember that you ever shared that um, you saw the visions of uh, in the end time that uh, the, the angels uh, they uh, created a kind of a canopy and in the canopy uh, within the canopy is like the manifestations of the uh, kingdom of God uh, happening. <clears throat> so uh, I also um, during I think one of the altar building. I had this understanding or this vision that uh, even if we <clears throat> go forth in two by two, sometimes like, you know, um, a husband and a wife or two two person go forth. And um, with us is also our uh, guardian angel. So uh, two person plus two guardian angel is actually four. And um, with the four, um, uh, you can form like... Um, the canopy like the four different living creatures mm. and um, within that uh, will be <clears throat> the manifestation of the kingdom of God. So um, it's like uh, whatever that is inside the ark, you know, would uh, receive or uh, manifest a, a different reality, the kingdom reality. So Likewise, you know, when we go out uh, two by two, together mm -hmm. with our guardian angels, uh, we form the four as a canopy uh, and uh, we can manifest like the Ark of the Covenant. Amen. Hmm. Amen. And one thing, uh, and this one I only got while just now preaching. Um, I knew all along and I've, uh, that 
2025 is a very, very important year. Very important. And certainly it's going to happen 27 and even pre-27, 26. And uh, pray with me on this and also just like a further notice to each one of us. I'm still praying for confirmation from the Holy Spirit and God uh, whether we should, as a group, go to uh, Pergamos, February the 9th, and then to Mount Nebo and Mukave uh, to complete a circuit, plus a visit to Israel uh, in 225, around February the 9th, and the rest of the week of February. Uh, I'm still waiting on God, but I'd like all of you to slot off that part if you want to be a part of uh, February the 9th in 2025, the last day of the 40-day fast, followed by uh, Mount Nebo and All Night Prayer and um, uh, Mukave. And of course, when we look at that, plus a trip to Israel through the bridge uh, that you cross uh, from Jordan. Uh, last time we crossed that bridge. And so it, once the Lord confirmed, I write down all the conditions for those who want to take part. So it's a multiple visit to Pugamos. And there'll be all night prayer to Mount Nebo, all night prayer, Mukave, all night prayer, and cross Israel to the Sea of Galilee, and all night prayer, and maybe uh, finish off one all night prayer in Jerusalem, and finish it. Hopefully, it will be able to be done in one week, plus travel, maybe a few more days, and each one of you pray about that. And uh, the reason for me holding back on that is because I did not want to build another altar on public land. I want to build an altar in a place that no one will touch it anymore and that land belongs to us. I've eyed a certain house in Pergamos that is along the hill, coming up from a different side hoping that we will have enough finances to buy it up and make it into our 24-hour prayer programs and dedicate the altar there. That would be something the Lord would love. But it would take finances to do that. And uh, we're still praying for the breakthrough of finances. And on uh, Mount Nebo, if we go back to Mount Nebo, which most of you have been where we all night prayer, all the altars are gone. Even the one with the formation of the rock, is, they have mowed down the whole rock. And so I'm a bit reluctant to be an altar there, but 2025 is very important. It's like the last time you can visit these places before the, the, the seven years of war start, when nobody can actually go to those areas. And... So pray about that. Think about it in your schedule, February the 9th to uh, plus another seven days to finish all the circuit. And then uh, some of you might have to save up your finances to do all the strip. But of course, uh, uh, Colleen, you can uh, uh, get the contact for the same, uh, what you call the same, uh, the, uh, the, the same travel company. Uh, he's the one who uh, last time we didn't use. Uh, she has the contact, so she don't mind passing to you. And they know us, and we know them. And then after that period, you can have a rest at the Dead Sea, and then everybody can go home. Those who don't have the time can go home early. And um, uh, while I was preaching, I just suddenly saw a flash vision of Pergamos, then 
of uh, of uh, Mukawe, uh, Mount Nebo, because I'm talking about the tabernacle. When I'm talking about Hui, I say it seems that you know uh, the altars and all the things that be is missing. So, uh, but the one in Mukawe is still there. Some of the shepherds there have like moved some of the stones, but it's easily rebuilt in Mukabe. It's like no man's land there. But the one tiny place in Mount Nebo, that one's gone. And uh, the last time I visited, I like, take, put a stone and anoint a tree there. This, hopefully they don't move the tree and the tree continue to grow tall. But pray about this. And each one of you, this is the first time I talk about it. And uh, that's may the Lord's perfect will be done. Mm. Like I say, if it has to be done, it has to be done. But let's uh, take each step as the Lord leads. Amen. I will, I will lay down the conditions and I will email it to you once the Lord confirms everything. Pastor, thank you for that. Thank you for that, Mina, here. Pastor. Hi, Hi. I, did, uh, I shared this with you on a Friday night. Uh, this is about the, um, the rod of authority going from us, parting the, parting the sea. And um, I remember sharing it on a Friday, but this is around the time we did the 24-hour worship, a 24-hour prayer. We did the prayer one time. I think it was yeah. around that time in February. Um, I remember being woken up at 4 a.m. and I think it was just prior to doing that or maybe just after, I can't remember exactly, but I was woken up after a dramatic dream where we were in a building um, in a house like upstairs, didn't recognize the building, but it was, uh, what was really important was looking out to the front and uh, seeing the ocean. And it was all drizzling lightly, it was just uh, light rain, but the view of the water from the ocean seemed to get closer and closer for some, for some reason. And suddenly, of course, the water was very close to the entrance of the house. And I remember uh, it was very dramatic because we could see, we, we just saw the expanse of the ocean. It is scary when you look at it from, uh, on a, in a dream because it looks is right in front of you. But, and it seemed to reach, but one of the family members, I think, started to spray. And then I sort of came in and I began to pray loudly as faith replaced fear and prayed very authoritative. It was very loud in Jesus' name. It was only one sentence, in Jesus' name, go back. It was so loud, so bold, and then suddenly realized in the flash of a second that ocean, which was like right in front of our eyes, just rolled away like a carpet. So oh, yeah. that's what I saw, and um, that was during our, uh, during just after or just before our 24 hour prayer, I think it was, yeah. Mm -hmm. So I just wanted to share because Sunday group may not have heard it, but Friday, I shared it on a Friday. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thanks for sharing that, Mina. Praise yeah. the Lord. Thank Amen. You. Amen. Amen. It's a question here. Will the angels have the full experience of the Godhead as much, as fully as a bride of Christ? If so, what is the uniqueness of the bride? The angels never suffered, went through us, uh, through, went through as much as a bride has to. There are different angels. And like Sadhu Sunna Singh mentioned, some angels are men who have lived and gone back to serve God. Some angels are actually created as angels, messenger angels uh, who do their part. Some angels come from other worlds and different parts of the universe that come and serve together on earth. And those angels that God allow to serve on earth, they actually suffer as we suffer and they are rewarded as we are rewarded. So for each one of us who are successful in our personal life, your guardian angels get as much reward as you. May we all succeed in God. Amen. And of course, those of you who have been following us faithfully, and I know most of you uh, looking at your names, all that, you are welcome to be part of the 2025 prayer walk and building altar in three places or four, which is uh, Pergamos, Mount Nebo, Mukawe, and uh, the Sea of Galilee. And, um, and uh, those, uh, we, were not, we don't need a big number of people. 
and uh, uh, you are qualified if you're part of this online church. And those who are part of our WhatsApp group, uh, you have to apply. And then we can pray and uh, pray. And if the Lord says no to you, then it's a no. And only those that we approve can be part of it. It's going to be a very special meeting uh, that is coming from the angels. The same angel that spoke to us all these years uh, in the end time move has been speaking uh, about 2025 to me. And I have a reluctance because I say, I'm, I don't want to build an altar on public land of people. I want to build an altar on a place that is ours and nobody can touch. And I hope the angel hear my voice and, and understands uh, this desire of mine so that they expedite all the breakthroughs so that we can do what I, I, I feel that we need to reach a point to do of having a, a demarcation of our own and a 24-hour place at least assigned. And we we'll do great works for the Lord. Amen. Because those who have left this move will never be allowed on this trip. Unless they, of course, uh, uh, indicated that, uh, that they have uh, repented of whatever misunderstanding of ways they are. But, you know, this is uh, interesting that we come to this stage in our doctrine to know that we're the Ark of God's covenant. Mm. Praise God, any other questions or any other additions or call in? Hmm. So, um, the Turkish uh, Lira has dropped a lot, a lot. <laughs> so maybe uh, if we get... Uh, it's still measure in Euro though. Hmm. Uh, but if we have somebody that is... Uh, I mean, when they do the tourists, they want to charge in the Euros, but... Euros is also uh, uh, much lower recently. Mm. Um, I think oh, yeah. uh, Singapore dollar is. <laughs> yeah. So if we if we have we need to have a local person there to buy the land, um, that would uh, be. Oh, the Lord already gave me a method. Mm. Once the finances that there, there's a certain method the Lord will give me. Yeah, it's like David. He gave me the plan how to build a temple. He mm. showed me. Yeah. Hmm. Mm. And Ismail, which is Smyrna, and Pergamos will be together. There will be a connection between the two. Yeah. And it's the airport that you can zoom into. Mm. We don't need somebody there. The Lord already told me how to do it. Yeah. Turkey, in fact, one, one, was one of the places where if you, uh, it, it is easy to get a some kind of a Permanent residence or citizenship. Yes. Yeah. Uh, yes. It's one of those places uh, easy to do so. Yeah. At the moment. Mm -hmm. But in the in the in the time after the seven year period of war, Turkey will be at war with Greece. It's gonna be much more difficult. And then Turkey will be harder to get in. And there's a reason all things come from the Lord, just like the Lord brought the gospel in the time of the Roman Empire, where the whole empire is easy to travel. And the same, there's a reason why God is making it easy in Turkey for such things as we need to do. And uh, as we expedite it, and as a lot enable, we will do so. And it will be glorious. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And as last week, uh we were talking about this. Uh, I think Pastor Abraham was sharing about the Wales revival and we're talking about it. So it's like now 120 years uh, since the the Wales revival and uh, in uh, just uh, two years, 2026 will be the 120 years of uh, the Azusa Street uh, revival. So yeah. basically, you know, we are in this time uh, between the two 
120 years between the two revivals. Interesting. Mm. Yeah. And 120 years is significant because that is the time when uh, Moses uh, led the people uh, with Joshua to the promised land, the yes. place of their rest. Yeah. Amen. So the, the time for us to enter the place of our rest for the church is eminent. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Wow, how real these visions are, you know. When I preach, I keep seeing all these visions, and that's how. I say, wow. <laughs> and while I'm talking to you and talking to the angels, I say, really? We had to be there, Amos? You know, you don't see the conversation in my thought. But uh, they know what they're doing. And it seems that after the year 2025, uh, when we reach 2026, everything is going to be like, it's like a backflow of 2027 to 2034, affecting the year before, uh, where things get, you know, uh, crazy in 2027 to 2034, the war years. So the backflow of that in the preceding year is going to take place. And it's more or less might be the last and final time we go to all these places. Mm. Yeah, in fact, the last time that we went to Turkey was uh, before just, before COVID. The, just before COVID, right? And then yes. the Lord, He arranged the timing. Just, yeah. just nice. Uh, and uh, yeah, mm. the Lord has to open up the opportunity because even like now, you know, the Middle East is. Uh, quite bad situation and uh, Turkey is also uh, having a, a leader that uh, quite into war <laughs> yes yes and Israel is being attacked uh, north and south and sideways uh, with missiles at the moment but suddenly if it's time to go it's time to go I remember when we went in 2014 uh, there was something going on, and some people say, Are you sure you want to go there? They say, No, once we step there, it's all peace. And it's the grace of God. Amen. Well, praise the Lord. Uh, Final words, uh, Colin or Aram or Elijah, before we close today's uh, Sunday. What a powerful and wonderful service that we just had. Amen. Praise the Lord. Father, thank you for your word. Thank you that we are now the ark of your covenant. Thank you, Father, for all that you are doing. We only take one step at a time. Sometimes we can see parts of the future. Sometimes the parts of the future are blocked to us. But whatever it may be, let your perfect will be done in our lives. Let your glory be revealed so that we all may stand in the presence of the living God and become messengers like Elijah who say, we stand in the presence of God. And let your authority and power flow forth on the earth today, even as this word go forth. Stir the hearts of each one of your people. Provide for them abundantly. Bless them. And bring forth power and grace. And huge breakthroughs that are beyond our imagination. 
such that we have the power to purchase property, to build 10,000 churches, to build 24-hour praise and worship, and to build your altars in our own land that we own. Thank you, Father. You say in John 14, if we ask anything in your name, you will do it. So in Jesus' name, we command that to come to pass. In Jesus' name, we command the power, the ability to be altars in our own land. Thank you, Father. Let your will be done, your kingdom be established. In Jesus' name. Amen.